Hello again. Right, I've got a little diamond burr in the drill and a lot of water flowing and I am engraving relatively deeply. You can see that I tested the depth with, with my thumb. Now this is lovely, lovely thick uh, lead crystal so it is quite soft and this is a sintered diamond as, as in a diamond burr where the grit goes all the way through. That's all right, you can use an ordinary burr with a coating of diamond dust. That is absolutely fine. I just like these because they, they last a bit longer. A lot longer. <laughs> um, right, now, basic shape. This is a very, very simple little landscape. I'm not going into great detail uh, with this little muntjac. Jack is a, a very cute little deer, quite different, with some distinctive markings on the faces. They're really, really sweet. They seem to be in abundance uh, here in East Anglia and probably across England. I'm not really sure. You'll have to look it up. But they, they are, they do seem to be everywhere, and really cute they are. Even on the golf course, we get them every now and again. Now, you can see I just pointed out, I'm not sure if you can see it on the big screen, I just pointed out briefly, there's the tiniest, tiniest little air bubble in this uh, glass, in the crystal, but it is so tiny, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but basically I just obliterated it <laughs> completely, very easily uh, in seconds. Sometimes if the bubble is deep into the glass and the upper surface is very, very thin, you might want to try and avoid it. Uh, but otherwise, this was right up on the surface and very small and easily obliterated. Um, gently sort of going in the direction of what would be the hair. As I say, I am not going into great detail on this particular animal. It's just going to be showing the um, markings of the drill work. That's all. There's no smooth, smooth baby bottom effect on this animal. <laughs> right, I am creating a little face you might think, in fact, this burr is a little bit large for the area, and I was thinking that as well. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Oh, then I noticed the front leg was mit missing. Using a very tiny burr, I have added some more details to the face. Funny little face, quite different. And the daintiest of little horns, which I'm going to add now with a, a very, very tiny little round burr. Eventually, there it is. Very carefully, one stroke. No, maybe two. <laughs> But ever so carefully. What, actually, once you've you've engraved one groove, it's quite easy to go back into that. I tried to make it quite deep, and that was quite effective. Have your reference image nearby, and just glance across to add these little details and shapes. You can always hold the image really close to the glass. Sometimes I do that. Um, now I've got a, a Dura white, which I'm very roughly putting in some half tones. It's got these two stripes on its head. And apparently it's also referred to a rib-faced deer. Very odd. 
And here I have got a tiny little rubber, which I'm just going over, going over roughly the, the areas where I've added the Dura White half tone. So it'll take that half tone and make it much darker. What I could have done here is created a point on this rubber just to get into the little eyes and, and the lines but I was quite happy with, with them as they were with the flat top rubber. So make it into a point if you really want to go into a teeny tiny little place. If it is a, a, a stripe um, then you can flatten the top and uh, run it sideways across a, a stripe. I've got the tiny little diamond again and I am just touching up some areas. Back to my Jura White, flattening the top with just a little stone. Any stone will do. And you can put a stone burr in the drill and have that running and hold the, the burr against, you know, hold the, the Jura White against the stone so that it either sharpens or flattens or whatever you want to do with it. And as you can see, I was wanting this little grassy effect and the Dura White is really nice for this because it is a soft tone and with a very simple stroke you can create a lovely bit of ground underneath. Now you will notice I have done, <laughs> this is a demonstration for those who are a little bit nervous about hooves and feet. And I always laugh at uh, animals that are missing their feet um, under grass um, by an artist because quite often, and I am very guilty, you uh, avoid these tiny, delicate little hoofs, which can look very silly if you don't get them accurately. And uh, quite frankly, I just decided I was going to cover the bottom half in grass and that's because the picture reference that I had did not show the little hooves and so it would have meant that I would have had to get a reference from another picture and I just thought nah grass will do <laughs> perfectly right it's only us that know these things so while I was waffling along I was actually engraving uh, the edges of some of the grooves on the tree trunk and here I go again just flicking it over I do a bit more later adding some more grass now to this side tree uh, well side and behind it's it's in an interesting position and I'll look at that positioning later you can see what the stone does which is really interesting it produces the half tone where there's no, no other engraving but where there's engraving as in the bottom of the tree when you run this Dura White over that engraving it produces a darker bit of uh, grass which is very useful so just popping some bark effects there are slight groo grooves that I have created as I say, with the diamond, and I am just enhancing those a little bit. What is quite nice as well is to create a, um, a hole in the tree. I think I will do that again soon because that can be rather fun. Just adding some more grass in front of these bushes. It is so random. It really it's it's like handwriting. Um, although handwriting is not random, but it it almost feels like it as I'm going along. Don't fuss too much. Now, I mentioned in the previous video I was not impressed with the very 
bright little streaks that are appearing in my giant rock or whatever you want to call this thing that was supposed to be in a mountain. <laughs> um, and so I am running over these brighter bits with a Dura White. Now what they what I had used was a stone burr, and sometimes the stone burrs have rough little bits in them, which you can smooth out quite easily by running them against another stone. But I just let them carry on, and now I'm just going over with the Dura White, which will just tone it down a little bit once I have added a rubber over the top of that. As I mentioned also in the previous video. Uh, in part one. This demonstration is mainly just to create a scene on the back that is not too bright for the front to show up really clearly. And also it's enough to show up itself very clearly. And it's quite interesting how I think this, this works really well. If I had engraved the back with diamond work, a lot of diamond work um, on this mountain or hill or whatever it is. Um, then the little creature in the front would not necessarily show up very well. You can, of course, use this idea for absolutely any subject, whether it's flowers or, or, or whatever, um, as long as the background is either uh, working in sympathy, like there are areas that are completely open showing uh, an area of engraving in the front, or you do a softer tone um, in the background, no matter what the subject is, so that when you're looking at it from the front, the main features in the front uh, show up. That is, if the features are, if the main features are in fact in the front. But the main features are always going to be the brightest ones. Okay, using the Dura White here, I am creating lots of little branches. And now, some little bunches of leaves. As I say, I don't know what kind of tree this is. This is a made-up tree. Um, and this is quite an effective way to create distant leaves. You don't want to sit and draw individual leaves, but these little bunches of leaves work quite, quite well. That's not too bad, is it? Quite simple. I mean, you you can really go to town with this. Uh, take more time, create thicker bunches, um, more little branches. Now I've got a very rough rubber, which I am just randomly blobbing over the tops of the leaves to create some very simple effects of half tone. Um, these rubbers leave a mark on the plain glass, which is very useful. It's, it creates a sort of a hue. There needs to be a fair amount of grit in the rubber. So when you, are, when you touch the rubber with your finger, you can feel that it's quite rough. Another little look and brightening up some of the areas that I had used the rubber on. Again, you can go back and forth and say, We are painting here, we are painting with diamonds and stones and rubbers. 
But what that rubber does effectively is fill in the tree. It fills in the gaps with, with whatever leaves and bits and bobs are, are in the background. So now creating the same effect on the tree in the front. I'm going to take this tree quite, quite high up the glass. I'd made it a little bit thick up there I have gone back down to the bottom making the bottom a little thicker as well because you don't want obviously the top of the tree to be wider than the base of the tree that would be a little bit strange so here I'm adding some more branches and you'll see I'll bring that branch to the front of the trunk simply by engraving carefully and when I say carefully this bow you've got to do it slowly not fast and obviously as I have mentioned before this uh, Dura White goes very slowly 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 roughly 12 to 15,000 rpm back with the rubber now what I'm going to do with this one, I've only done a few leaves on this front tree. I'm going to whip over the whole um, area before engraving those leaves, just for something different, because it doesn't really matter. You can do before and after. You can see the hue effect that it creates on the glass just by itself, a soft, a soft tone. Great for clouds and that sort of thing. We could have added some clouds, actually. Don't forget there are branches and leaves that come in front of the tree as well. Often um, people forget and they do everything out the side and out the back, but not out the front. So having a look at that, it's not too bad, it's coming along nicely. Now you can see how I have created a whole effect. So we've got a tree on one side, a tree on the other side, and the animal virtually in between. So when you're looking at it from the front, it has a framing sort of effect, not a whole effect, that sounds silly, a frame to it. So now I've got a rough, I know it's a white stone, but it's not a Dura White. It's quite a, a rough little stone. And I decided that the background needed a little bit of possibly water. I wasn't sure at the time, but I then decided oh, this will do, this will be water. So just running it along back and forth and that will be giving you the effect of highlights on the water which we will obviously tone down a little bit in a moment. If you are not sure about the level it is really important to get a horizontal level 
Um, just hold, just hold the glass upright or stand it upright um, and hold a, a pen steady against it. Turn the glass against the pen and make sure you get a straight line. Um, I'm using this same burr to double along and make some more rough ground effects. A few stones and twigs and whatever. Now you can roughly see the effect of the water in the background. It's always important to regularly look at your work. Stop and look at it. And I do a lot of looking at the work. I obviously don't put it all in my video, that's for sure. I have got a little diamond in the drill and I am adding a couple of wee highlights onto some of the leaves. Now I could do a lot more and in fact this is looking a little bit dotty, this whole effect. Doesn't really matter. But perhaps you could spend more time and, and look at pictures of trees and make it a little bit more realistic. Um, I'm looking again at this little character's face and decided there needed to be a little bit more darkness. So I've got a little rubber. And now I'm taking a large black rubber which I am, as I mentioned, I was going to do, tone down this water slightly. This rubber also leaves a hue on the glass. It's like blending or blurring. It's like if you're in Photoshop and you decide to use the blur button. There is always what I call a fourth dimension, that is when you are engraving the back and the front of a glass in a scene like this, it is the very, very sides that kind of are no man's land and sometimes don't make a lot of sense when you look at them from the side. Always sign your work and date it if you like. And there you have it. Cute little scene. Don't know where it is. Doesn't really matter. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching guys. Bye for now.